And welcome back in here uh, to TSSR Game Time Live. Glad you're alongside here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because it is going to be, uh, we've got the Cyclones and the uh, Brimfield uh, Lady Indians here tonight. And again, uh, definitely going to be one of those. Uh, we saw a rough start for the JV uh, tonight, uh, John. We'll see how things go tonight uh, for the uh, varsity edition of the Cyclones here this evening. Yeah, JV got off to a rough start, and that just snowballed throughout the game, the JV of the Cyclones, that is. And we, we know what the final score was of that game. I'm sure this uh, varsity team is going to look out and maybe try to avenge the younger kids here. And as we know, Brimfield has a great, a great girls' basketball program. They've been good for a couple years now, and – West Prairie has started to get into the win column here as of last year. They had a couple wins on the season. Definitely a rebuilding team, but they have definitely made strides, and uh, I expect this year maybe they can have a breakout season. And we'll see indeed if they uh, do just that, as I always do. I'm going to kind of step aside from my PA duties. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, of course, IHSA uh, rules uh, make sure you wear your masks at all time at all IHSA sporting events throughout this 2021-2022 uh, season. Players and administration of West Prairie High School uh, welcome you to tonight's varsity contest between the Lady Indians of Brimfield High School and your West Prairie Cyclones! At this time, gentlemen and ladies, please rise and remove your caps for the playing of our national anthem. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And now, the starting lineups. First, for the visiting Brimfield Lady Indians. Number four, Sophie Bedell. Number 10, Ellie Doe. Number 12, Elin Peterson. Number 20, Ella Loon. And number 21, Jacqueline Fabry. The Lady Indians are coached by Mary Beth Dura and assisted by Kennedy Dura. And now, ladies and gentlemen, see the storm clouds on the horizon. Feel the wind start to blow. It is time for the starting lineup for your West Prairie Cyclones! Number one, Eddie, this is Spain! Number two, Maddie Hood! Number three, Grace Vanonic! Number four, 
Ellie Arnold. And number 10, Lauren Powell. The Cyclones are coached by Grant Bland and assisted by Mary Vanonik. Your officials for tonight's game are James Cahill, Daryl Ippinson, and Sean Cantwell. Good luck to all the coaches and players in tonight's contest. And I guess the non-musical edition for tonight, I was kind of waiting for the uh, music to uh, get going there to give you the, uh, all right, good. And, and thankfully, I don't have my uh, Bruce Weber voice. I had that for quite a while earlier this season. Dribble by Ella Loon, kicks it out. And up top, three on the way, kaboom. As the three makes it three to nothing in favor of the Brimfield Lady Indians. Then we've got... A foul here. The one thing to look for here tonight, Brimfield with a distinct size advantage. We'll see how West Prairie decides to match up down low and uh, see if Brimfield can find a way to uh, sort of abuse that here. Spain brings it into Vanonik. She's matched up with Doe. A junior, Elmwood Brimfield, very good. Powell nearly has her pocket pick, puts one in the lane, misses it. Rebound to Spain, she'll put it up. Fouled from behind by Loon. And that'll put Addie to Spain up to the free throw line. And that is already, I believe, the second personal foul on the Brimfield Lady Indians. She is first. To Spain with the uh, first free throw. And so the Cyclones on the board at 3-1. to one. Second one on the way. It is no good. Snapped up there by Ellie Doe. Doe dribbling up to the far side. Spins it out of there. Works out top for Fabry. Faber to Loon. Loon puts it on the floor a couple times, tried to pass it out, kicked out there for Elin Peterson. And now on the outside wing, three is no good, and Loon going to scoop that one right back up. Cyclones match up here, kicked over now in the uh, corner for, it was for Doe. She'll hold and work it out top here, working back up top there for Fabry. Fabry holds, gives in the corner to Bedell. Drives down the drive the lane, and Loon's going to be fouled in there. And West Perry there setting up in sort of a 3-2 zone. Brimfield doing a nice job looking for the skip pass, trying to get these players moving, looking for openings. And right there is Brimfield's going to drive in and get two shots. And the free throw is no good. It'll stay right now at 3-1. Uh, to one. Second one on the way. It is good. So ups the uh, lead to 4-1. Uh, to one. For the Indians of Brimfield. And again, is not Elmwood, Brimfield. Lauren Powell bounces it out. Nice back cut there. Eddie to Spain can't get the layup to go. Fight for it on the floor. Allie Arnold tied up with it. They're ripping it out of there was Jacqueline Fabry. Nice passing cut there from Lauren Powell and Eddie to Spain. Just couldn't convert the easy two down low. 647 mark of the first quarter into Vanonic on the near baseline. Couple of dribbles. Looks, 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 bounces out top, and that one stripped away, and on the way with it is Elin Peterson, puts it up, and can't get it to go, gets her own rebound, dribbles it out of there, wings it under the basket, wide open, and putting it up and in is Sophie Bedell. And Bedell with a two for the Indians, makes it a 6-1 lead, as Vanonic down, trying the backdoor cut into Hood, and Hood going to travel with it. A little too much shake in the bake. And turns it over. Six to one lead now. Six twenty left to go here. First quarter. Elian Peterson bringing it across half court. Brings it out to May uh, Fabry rather. Lobs in the lane to Loon. She'll spin, and Arnold nearly picked it away to Peterson. Peterson working the drive in the lane. Puts it on the way. Bounces in and good. Eight to one advantage now. And coming out of there, Powell works it up top, looks to drive on Peterson down the lane, kind of the sweeping hook shot, and Lauren Powell puts it home. I'll let you commentate on that one, Mr. John. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she just had a good shot there, a little hook shot down low. Was able to find a way to get inside, and Westbury is really uh, here in the first couple of possessions. They've been looking to drive and look for that baseline cutter. It worked the first time from Lauren Powell to Addy to Spain. She just couldn't convert. So we're going to see a steal here from Brimfield on the fast break. Peterson held it up, now works it out to Jacqueline Fabry. Coming back to Peterson, she'll hold, looks at Loon coming across. 
the lane. Loon matched up on Hood, missed it. Rebound Fabry, she missed it. And that one, yes, and it counts. Loon going back up, that foul is gonna be on Hood. And right so there we see that size advantage that Burnfield has, just able to get their own rebounds and just keep shooting it back up until they finally got something to go down. Well, you know, John, they always say you can't teach tall. And that one, uh, good, along with the two. It's an 11-3 lead. You know, Brimfield with the press. Bononic trying to thread her way up the sideline, and she bounced that one out of bounds as she tried to head up that way. And we've got a timeout called here by Grant Bland and uh, the Cyclones of West Prairie will step aside as well. This is TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. MDH has committed to having a top-notch ob unit. The new facility, the Dolores Cater Schweitzer Women's Center, this is a quality facility that the patients need to match the quality of care. And then we also have a new clinic, which is state-of-the-art. And here at McDonough, we have a team. And everybody feels like they're a part of the successes that we have. We have a strong team in our office and in labor and delivery. You will get the best care at McDonough District. Back here uh, in the gym as we bring you our first ba basketball broadcast of the season. And glad again you're alongside with TSSR Game Time Live and volleyball. And actually, uh, basketball and volleyball where they should be in the fall. Peterson brings it in. Loon nearly lost the handle on it. Up top to Fabry. Fabry holds. And Grace Fanonic, nice job. Tipping that one out of bounds. Cyclones have kind of dropped into a 3-2 or 1-2-2 two, two, looks like. Cross courts it. And now they're back up to Fabry. Fabry holding out top. Lobs in the lane. Loon scoops it up. Or actually the, bringing it up was Bedell and drops it right down to Loon. Puts it in for a 13-3 lead. Despain tried to bring it into Hood. And dribbling around here. It's going to be Brimfield ball. Has a 13 to three advantage. Peterson brings it in, box offensive set. And into Fabry, back down the corner. Peterson toes the three, it is no good and long. And the rebound, Loon able to speak it up, pick it up. Loon drives in, shoot shot, no good. And a rebound out of bounds, it'll go over to West Prairie. We'll see if West Prairie can finally find a way to get around this press here as, this, as soon as Brentfield put this on, West Prairie kind of shaking their boots a little bit. Is that pass going to be tapped on the inbounds and lands in the hands of Allie Honor and she's fouled? Well, and that's what you got to do. You can't bring it into the – you got to get it into the center of the floor. You cannot get it – however you do that, you cannot get it into the corners. As Lauren Powell will dribble it up here, 13-3 lead for Brimfield. And dribbling down to the corner, they give it a look to Despain. Despain looking to go in, and Peterson says thanks for the gumball, Mickey. Running with Maddie Hood, uh, misses the shot, and Hood going to pick up the foul. And the foul will be the third on the West Prairie team. Each team with three so far in this first half of play. And that will put Elin Peterson up to the free throw line. Free throw is good. Lauren Bell will make her first appearance into the ball game as Maddie Hood goes out. 14 to three lead now for the Indians and Peterson makes them both. And makes it 15 to three. Cyclones work it up. Arnold nearly fell down, got up to Vinonic, drives in the lane and fouled on the way by Mabry. So Mabry picks up the foul. That is the fourth on the Brimfield team. Inbounds comes from Addie to Spain. Line offensive set into, into Bell. Bell to Powell. Down in the corner to Spain. She will put up the three. A little long of the mark. Arnold with a nice rebound there. Bounce in the lane, and they pick it away. Quickly up to Peterson. She'll drive lane, put it up and in and good. And Brimfield quickly jumps on that and makes it a 17-3 lead. Back comes Bononic the other way. And Loon's going to pick up a foul. A lot of fouls here, really, from both sides, and it's resulted in some free throws. We'll see how that plays in as we uh, close out the first half here. 
Grace Vanonic up at the free throw line. Free throw is no good as Vanonic missed that one. Allie Arnold out as Lindsey Dunn will come in and Loon will go out for. And we've got a, a mask break timeout here in this first quarter. That'll give us time to uh, go over a few things and we'll do that thanking our fine sponsors here on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. You know, you see fires on TV all the time. You don't understand what the families are really going through until you've lived it. The day before the fire, life was good. We went to bed, we woke up, and we had nothing. If it was not for Country Financial, we would still have nothing. And we're back here as it is the 17-3 lead here for the uh, Indians of Brimfield. But that is already their uh, fifth team foul. So one of those things, you know, you really have to uh, be a little careful is uh, see Loon going out and that. And they have a lot of depth on this team. They're, they're tall, they're athletic. And you can see why one of the, they were one of the top teams in Class 1A last year, John. Yeah, absolutely. And to your point, uh, early foul trouble here, as we saw, uh, Loon got pulled there early. I believe she picked up two quick ones. And we're only well, two minutes through this first quarter, three minutes through this first quarter. And that will definitely have an impact going down the stretch. Losing one of, the, um, losing one of those tall girls to foul trouble could uh, be trouble for them. And that's one thing with Cyclone's going to have to be a little – uh, careful as they picked up several fouls on their own. Lindsay Dunn making her a first appearance into the game. It is 17 to 3. Grace Vanonic up for the second one. And it is good. So Vanonic able to uh, make that one and make it a 17 to 4 lead now. As Brimfield works it around, they work it to Peterson. Peterson in the lane, and that is Bedell puts it up and puts it in right past the defense. And drops it home as it is 19 to 4. To Spain will toe up a three, and Eddie to Spain dropping home the three ball corner pocket. 19 to 7, but right back the other way comes at Brimfield, and that is Jacqueline Fabry missing it. Rebound done. Out of there with it over to Bell. Bell gonna work it out of there. Over it comes for Venonic, and they'll work across here. 19 7. Advantage, Powell driving in, slows, lost it. Peterson picking up, Eddie Despain chasing her. Peterson in the lane, puts it up and will be fouled by Despain. And as the third on the West Prairie team. As Peterson back up at the free throw line, this is uh, several that she's shot. Free throw is in and good and puts the 20th point on the board for The Allie. Indians. Allie Honor will check in here for I to Spain. And the second one, no good. Rebound tipped and going to be pulled down. And another foul on West Prairie. So it is 20 to 7. As the fouls adding up for both teams. And the shot on the way. Kind of the one handed shot. That's interesting. Um, Maddie Hessing with it second one on the way no good rebound uh, snapped up by Fabry she'll go up and be fouled as you mentioned the fouls just piling up here as we see back to back to back uh, trips to the line here for Brimfield and that is the six team foul on West Prairie as free throw is no good by Fabry and I'm sorry, folks, I, the uh, foul counter thing is so small on here. It is hard for this old man to see. Fabry misses both. Rebound uh, tipped around and going to be uh, pulled down. Bedell misses it and then flipped back in by Hessing, but off of the uh, leg of Bedell. And out of bounds, it was 21 to 7. 
And up come the Cyclones. Lindsey Dunn trying to dribble, has it uh, picked away by Fabry. Knocked out of bounds, it'll stay here with West Prairie. Inbounds going to come from Vanonic. Vanonic looking for somebody. Whips it out to Dunn. Lost the handle on it. Fabry going to pick it away. Chased by Powell and Arnold and get sandwiched. And kind of a collision, but no, no foul called. And I'll keep things to myself. But not sure there wasn't a little extracurricular activity along the way there somewhere. Inbounds comes. Peterson toes up the far side three. It is no good. Rebound tipped around. And Powell able to snatch it out of there and head up the court. She's one on three. Dribbles up and has her pocket pick. Coming back the other way is Doe. Doe puts it up and it's cash money as she drops it in for a 23-7 to seven advantage. Bononic up to Powell. Dribbles with 221 left to go here in this first quarter. Spins in lane. Blocked away. Peterson out there with it. Out to Hessing. Hessing. Can take her time as she puts it up and puts it in. And now makes it a 25 to three. We're gonna have, or 25 to seven, as we're gonna have a commercial timeout and thank more of the very fine sponsors here on our program. Folks like the Community News Brief. For all your local news, uh, subscribe to the Community News Brief Weekly Edition. Mail directly to your home every Friday. As an option, you can receive Monday and Wednesday editions by email. All this for only $42 per year or $38 per year if you're 65 and older. Uh, single copies can be purchased at select locations in Bushnell. Colchester and Blandonsville. Get our farm equipment with facilities in Colchester and Macomb, Illinois, an agriculture equipment manufacturer that has been in business since 1930 and is currently hiring. Start a new career with excellent benefits and starting hourly wages of $18 to $24 per hour. For more information, call 309-776-4111 or visit them online at www.yetterco.com forward slash careers. And as we go along here, again, glad you're alongside for TSSR Game Time Live Action. And, and John, there, you know, again, transition defense, the issue as we had, you know, several got away from them early on. And, and you know, they were keeping this game fairly, fairly close. And that transition defense really hurt them those last two trips. Yeah, very similar story to what we saw in the JV game is that shot's going to be blocked from Addison to Spain. And as we see, that transition defense just able to get out in front of everybody and uh, players making nice passes to get to these layups down low. Minute 45 left to go first quarter. Allie Arnold with it, bounces into Hood. Hood puts it on the way, missed the shot. Rebound uh, pulled out of there. Doe coming out of there with it. Drives the lane right through everybody. Kind of a hot knife through butter. Puts it up, puts it in. Collision at the end, but no call. And makes it 29 to seven. Powell quickly up to Arnold. She'll drive baseline, cut off by Hessing. Turns it to Vidonic. Vidonic trying to tiptoe baseline, throws it up. Peterson steals. One on one with Powell. Peterson in the lane, puts it up. Can't get it to go. Shoots again in the lane. Missed rebound and missed again. And Bedell will get it now and shoot it up and in. 29-7 right now. It is going to be on Lauren Powell. And that will be on the Cyclones. <clears throat> As Bedell puts the free throw on the way, missed it. And actually, I thought we had kind of the uh, multiplier foul. It went from 7 to 13, but it is no. It is indeed 7. It is the bonus for the Indians. Second free throw goes. And so it makes it 30 to seven. As Vanonic will bring it up, fires it right to Hessing. Hessing dribbling in on Vanonic, switches sides, puts it up and puts it in. And it has uh, become a little brutal. 50 seconds left to go here in this first quarter. As Powell dribbles it down, out it comes for Vanonic. Three on the way he is good. Grace Vanonic makes it a 32 to 10. As they'll bring it up to Doe, Doe will dribble, put shot on the way, good. Nice dribble pull up, mid-range jumper there from Doe. Able to get two on the board after uh, Grace Vanonic hits a three here. 
Powell down to the far side, dribbling there, pulls up 18-footer, shot no good, rebound fought for, batted out of bounds, and it'll stay with West Prairie, as I think Hessing and Fabry were kind of fighting each other for it. And it makes 17 seconds left in this first quarter. Inbounds will come from Addie Despain into Vinonic. Back now, well, bounce it off of Despain's leg, and Doe picks it up. Doe heading the other way. As Bedell, Bedell wide open, up and in and good. 36 to 10 here. And now Vinonic will heave one at the buzzer, and no good at the end of one quarter of play. It is 36 to 10, uh, Brimfield, right here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. I chose physical therapy because I knew I wanted to be in the healthcare field. Um, I wanted to be able to help patients in some way re uh, related to uh, more in depth. We get to know our patients, and that's really uh, what kind of sets us apart. Back here, 36 to uh, 10. A lead here as we head to the second quarter play. And John, you were talking about it. Th this is a very, very good team. They're tall, they're athletic, and, and every one of them can get up and down the floor. Yeah, absolutely. They're all tall, long arms, able to play the passing lanes very well. A lot of tipped balls. Um, that results in a lot of steals and a lot of fast breaks, and that's just really been their bread and butter here early. And, and I'm telling you, uh, 36 points is a lot for a high school first quarter. I mean, that's that you figure eight minutes, uh, they're rolling along. I don't know the math. Sorry, folks at home. Um, I wish I did because that's math was never my strong suit. Actually, I guess if you have, figure it that way, that's 44. Yeah, that right? well, it'd be if you multiply it out, or it would be essentially four, uh, four and a half points a minute. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, a wicked pace, and they have uh, <laughs> they've set the pace, and they have uh, just played up to it. I mean, there's nothing more you can say. Vaughn into the game now, going to fire it. She was looking for Doe or Loon, missed him. So on the floor, it is Vaughn, Doe, Loon, also Bedell, and Hessing. On the floor for the Cyclones, it is Despain, Powell, Hood, Arnold, and Vanonic. Powell dribbling to the near side. Puts it up, can't get it to go. Loon scoops it up, and that's amazing when your center now leading the charge up the court. Lobs it for Bedell. She'll kind of throw it toward the basket, miss it. Rebound fought for. Allie Arnold out of there with it. And off in the hands of Grace Vanonic. Vanonic over to Lauren Powell. She'll get a screen from Hood, but pulls up. And now Hood out of there with it. Over to Arnold. Let it go through her hands. Bedell scoops it up. Drives in, now slows, tries to stutter, step, and Arnold did a nice job tipping it away from behind, and they're actually going to say it'll go over to West Prairie. 717 mark of this first or second quarter of play, rather. Dribbling it up now. It is Powell. She'll bounce it over to Vanonic. Vanonic will dribble down, and I'm not sure who she was going to. It was either Powell or Arnold, and threw it over their heads. As back the other way comes Doe. Doe working out top with it. Comes to Loon. Loon thought three, fakes Arnold out, puts up 15-footer, and missed everything to Spain with the rebound. Eddie to Spain coming out of there, bounces for Vanonic, and Vanonic will set up the offense for West Prairie. High one for set, and in a legal screen. I saw that one coming a mile away. As the illegal screen will bring Lauren Bell up and off the bench. And that's one of those, John, you saw that one uh, coming a mile away. Yeah, I got to get your feet set when you're setting that pick up high. And that is the eighth team foul on West Prairie. That is the third on Maddie Hood. Doe with it out to Vaughn here. Lobbing down for Bedell. Despain missed the lay it. And then Bedell putting it up and putting it in. Uh, puts the 38th point on the board. Makes it 38 to 10, 6.40 left to go, second quarter. To Spain with it, looking to drive in the lane. Puts up shot, no good, and the rebound, Loon. Fakes a couple people out, heads the other way as uh, one or three on one, and Loon just takes it in, says, I got it. Puts it up to 40 to 10, Lindsey Dunn and Jersey Brown will check in for West Prairie as Lauren Powell comes down the far side and offensive foul, Powell with the elbow, and that's a you can't do that. 
definitely got a little bit of chicken wing action there on that one. That's 40 to 10 lead here. Come uh, Dunn and Brown in. They bring it over to Vaughn. Vaughn holds it above her head. Comes over to Loon. Loon waits. Back to Vaughn. Vaughn open three. Fakes it and tried to throw it in the lane. Picked away to Spain. Lost the handle on it. Vaughn picks it up over to Doe. Doe puts it up. That's an 18-footer. Again, the dreaded long two. Lauren Bell, a rebound. Trap back there. Trying to get rid of it. And we've got a timeout called by Grant Bland. He'll take a 30. And we'll thank some of our fine sponsors here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. Your farm is your legacy. As a leading farm insurer, Country Financial is here to help protect it. Call Brett Powell, your local country rep, at 309-652-3889 for a free quote today. Good Hope Gardens, located at 445 East Main Street, Good Hope, just east of the North Elementary School, open April through October, Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. for all of your fresh produce needs. Be sure to follow their Facebook page for updates. Grover and Mary Jo DeCounter and family invite you to Good Hope Gardens. Come see where it's grown. And, of course, we are back to action here. Brown and Vanonic out top with it. And Vanonic trying to dribble through two people. Vaughn steals it away. Lobs it for Loon, who lost the handle on it. And tried to throw it out for somebody. Despain picks it up and brings it over to Vanonic. 40 to 10, Vanonic. Up with five and a half left to go. First half of play, Grace Fanonic. Fires down for Dunn. Dunn looking to dribble on Hessing. Turns it out of there, lobs it up. Fanonic nearly had it picked. She dribbles on, kicks to the Spain, wheels into the lane, and bounces it to Dunn. Dunn grabs it, throws it cross court, and Vaughn says thanks for the gumball, Mickey. Vaughn dribbles in the lane, puts it up, misses it, to Spain the rebound. And to Spain over. For Vanonic, Vanonic fakes, now puts up a long three, no good. Despain down with it. Dribbles, comes over to Dunn, Dunn down the lane, swatted by Hessing, but there will be a foul. And John, that's what they need to do, maybe attack this defense a little bit. We mentioned how uh, the Indians had picked up several fouls. That is their team sixth. Dunn at the free throw line. Missed it. And of course, if you're wanting to get back into this game, if you're West Prairie, you got to look to get trips to the line. It's the best way to score. Score while the clock's off. And, you know, they have to start to look to be aggressive here at attacking the rim. As Dunn puts up the second one, gets it to go. 41 to your 40 to 11. 445, clock rolling here. Elan Peterson dribble up. Line shift once again. By the Indians, Grace Fanonic with the steal, drives in the lane, puts it up, missed it. And the rebound pulled out of there, coming on the way is Olivia Kappas. Up to Loon, Loon in the lane, dumps it down to Bedell. Beauty of a pass, up and in and good, and it's 42 to 11. Lauren Bell with a pass out top, nearly picked away. To Spain with it, stolen by Bedell. And it is a one on four Peterson touch pass to Loon, who puts it up and in. 44 to 11, Vanonic down the sideline, coming to Bell. She has it, Loon says, I'll take that. Heads it out of there, runs it up the floor to Bedell. Bedell up and missed it. Tips the rebound away. Kappas up with it. She can't get it go. Bedell puts it up and puts it in. 44 or 46 rather to 11. Vanonic toes up a three. No good. And we're going to have a mask timeout, 46 to 11 is the score here. And, and, John, again, you know, we can't speak to transition defense once again. Yeah, and, I mean, it's hard to stop. Brimfield's making three passes, and they're already up the court. All these girls, they know how to pass. They know who, how to spot who's open. And, I mean, we just saw it there. They went on, I don't know, I'd say probably 30 seconds came off the clock, and they scored quick, th probably six quick points off fast breaks. And, I mean, it's just – it's hard to stop, Greg. Yeah, it, it, it just is. It is um, 
it, it's just darn near impossible to stop. I mean, you, you just can't um, you can't get that going. It makes it really, really tough. And um, I you know I don't know what what exactly the answer is, but I know one of the things that that West Prairie is going to go back and look at in practice is they're going to look at transition defense. Yeah, um, I mean, because that's something obviously, and and again, you gotta you gotta talk about how, what a great team Brimfield is, and I'm telling you, there's a, <laughs> I don't see many one A teams that are that are gonna stay in front of them. I mean that, even even what the, the traditional centers and posts and that, my goodness, they can get it up and down the floor, and you can see that is their mindset, that super super aggressive mindset. Uh, let's thank again our fine sponsors like McDonough Telephone Cooperative. This West Prairie game stream made possible by McDonough Telephone's Fiber Internet. McDonough Telephone offers lightning fast and reliable fiber internet, video, phone, and camera systems in McDonough County area. Call 309-776-3211 to check your availability. And uh, substitution, uh, let's see, it is Lauren Powell, Lauren Bell, Jersey Brown, Allie Arnold, and Lindsey Dunn on the floor for West Prairie. Peterson brings it across half court, brings it out there for Wewell to Kappas. Now try to get it in the lane, stolen away. Loon able to pull it back, but Brown able to steal it from her. Brown into the lane, puts it up, and fouled on the way through. And again, being aggressive, John, what you got to do. Yeah, you gotta look to force turnovers, get out in the break, much like uh, much like Broomfield has throughout the game. You just gotta look to attack the rim, be aggressive, get free throws, make your free throws, and score while the clock isn't running. And Brown misses the first, so that will uh, put it as 46 to 11. Second one is good. Jersey Brown gets it down and makes it 46 to 12. They wing it over to Kappas. Kappas down to Peterson in the lane to Loon. Loon spinning, puts it up on, done and in. And a beauty of a spin move there, almost, uh, dare I say, NBA-esque. As she got it through there, Allie Arner going to dribble up and going to be fouled there as Taylor Wewell going to commit the personal foul. And up at the free throw lines, Allie Arnold. Arnold misses that one. That one a little bit short. 48 to 12 right now. Second one on the way. It is good. The Cyclones getting one of two. Makes it 48 to 13. Peterson. They work it across to Kappas. Kappas to Peterson. Swinging it around. They end the loon. Loon spinning again. And goes up, puts it up and in. I, man, she had people climbing all over and just turned and put it up 50 to 13. Powell quickly up the court and gets fouled as she goes through there. And I got to say it, Brimfield, a little sloppy on defense there. Yeah, just not fully getting set up. Lauren Powell recognizes that and goes and attacks the rim and results in two free throws for her. And Powell will make the first. So it makes it 50 to 14, and we will, will go out as Doe will come in. Makes it 50 to 14, and second one on the way is good. Peterson comes on the dribble to Kappas. Kappas out to Doe, Doe to Peterson. Peterson, quick three on the way, and no good. Rebound tipped, and Peterson nearly had it, but Arnold tied up with it. Possession arrow, say West Prairie. And if you're West Prairie, you got to rebound the basketball, be able to close out these possessions, not give up offensive rebounds, and in turn extra possessions to Brimfield because you know that they are going to be using those effectively here. Grace Vanonic back in. Powell will bring it up and almost threw it off the back of Doe's head. And that one, Loon's going to tip out of bounds, try to tip it away from Allie Arnold. Lauren Bell will bring it in. Lobs it in for Arnold. Arnold dribbles down. Out to Bell. She'll put up the three. No good. The rebound done with it. She'll shoot. Won't go. Loon the rebound. And you watch. Up the court they come. Loon down the lane. Goes up with it. Puts it up. Missed it. And right there to put it up and put it in is Ava Heinz, the freshman. 
52 to 15. Bananek works it toward the near side, bounces out for Powell. Powell down the lane, spin, shoot, shot, and no good. And the rebound, they lob it out to a flying doe, and up and in and good. 54-15, lead for Brimfield. As Powell dribbles, high one, four set once again for the Cyclones. As Powell bounces to Dunn, Dunn fakes, trying to get rid of it. Now comes out top for Bell. Bell dribbles, hands it over to Powell. Powell coming over for Vanonic. Vanonic dribbling down as Powell will shoot. Won't get it to go. And the rebound, Peterson. Peterson, one-handed pass up to Doe, up and in. Man, that is how quick they put it up and in. And it is 56 to 15. It, it's hard fight against that. That John, that's just kind of innate nature. I mean, they just know how to do that. Yeah, I mean, you miss a shot blink, and there's already three Blimfield players standing underneath their rim. It's just a it's hard team to get out and get out in front of. And we see here another fast break. And two nice passes there as a pretty bounce pass is going to result in two here. And again, it's just that transition has been absolutely killer. 53 to fit or 58 to 15 now. As Vanonic going to come down the near side. Bounces for Bell. Bell trying to get it away from Heinz. Nearly had it picked, had it swat a couple times. Puts up shot done, tried to save it in, does. And then Arnold with it in the lane to Vanonic. She'll put it up, miss it. Loons down with a rebound. And off they go to the races. Peterson saves that one, puts it up and puts it in. 60 to 15. 10 seconds left to go here in this uh, first half as Powell dribbles. Goes to put up and a jump ball possession hour should give it over to Brimfield. Peterson up with it, quickly to Loon. She'll toe up a three, no good at the end of the first half of play. It is 60 to 15 here at the end of the first half of play as the Elmwood or the Brimfield, see, I know I do it. <laughs> I do that all the time with them. 60 to 15 lead for the Indians here at the half. This is TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. I became a nurse practitioner because I wanted to do more, I wanted to learn more, um, actually have more um, hands-on individually with patients. The rewarding part for me is that I get to come to work and learn something new every single day. Well, we were uh, camping. And then I got a phone call from my neighbor and said that we got hit by a storm. I said, you better come home because there's no roof. He said, I look up and see the sky. He didn't know what you were going to do, where you are going to go, you know, but Country Financial took care of us. We anticipate something that we hope never happens, but when it happens, we are there to make good on our promise. Well, John, need to talk a little bit about, uh, got to thank Mr. Finch for getting me a schedule here this evening and getting me, bringing the uh, schedule along. And uh, so let's look at the boys. Now, Dwayne did mention that the boys will be on the uh, air streaming, whatever you want to call it. They will be on coming up at the Bushnell Tournament. Of course, that Bushnell Tournament will be starting uh, next week on the uh, 23rd. And they'll play the 23rd, 24th, 26th, uh, 20, and two on the 27th. They'll be home here for the first time with Elmwood. That is coming up November 30th. And, of course, uh, we'll have that one uh, for you. Also, uh, coming up, uh, the girls' basketball will be at the Lady Hornet Classic. And that will be 10.30 a.m. varsity, noon at JV on this coming Saturday. And then uh, they'll play Tuesday against Liberty, all these at uh, Brown County in the 26th versus Pleasant Hill Western, that one at uh, 3 p.m. And then they'll finish that on uh, that Saturday. And next home game will be Monmouth United. That will be on the 29th, a Tuesday. For the uh, junior high boys, now that will be coming up tonight. They're playing uh, Southeastern. They'll have uh, La Harp Dallas City at Colchester. 
That'll be on Monday the 22nd. On Tuesday, they'll be here at the high school. Tuesday the 23rd, they'll be here at the uh, high school as they take on uh, Macomb. And then uh, on December 1st here, or November 30th, uh, United at Colchester, Scioto at North Fulton on December 1st. So, man, we've got a lot of home games coming. We uh, will not be bringing the junior high games to you, but we'll be bringing you the uh, varsity boys and girls uh, contest, JV and varsity both. I wasn't sure if uh, um, – which ones you'll be a part of, or if you're my partner, or if you're everybody's partner, John. <laughs> Pretty much. Got to work with everybody nowadays. Well, that uh, I, I'm kind of on the girls' side. You may see, may see me make some appearances on the boys' side of things, but uh, Dad's got junior high boys' games to be at as well, so one of those things. Uh, I tried doing three things in the fall, but that you know how things like that uh, work out. But uh, here at the half, I, I, I tell you, the thing I am most impressed with Brimfield, John, is the amazing, amazing transition game that they they run. Yeah, and it all starts on the defensive end, Greg, really forcing a lot of turnovers. They've got out and run. As I mentioned, you blink, and there's already three people standing in the paint waiting for a pass so they can shoot a layup. It's truly just been a terrific pace they've put on West Prairie and it's definitely paid dividends as it is 60 to 15 and as you mentioned 60 points in one half of a high school basketball game for boys or girls is impressive no matter what well and about the closest comparison I can make uh, back in 97 long before a John uh, there was the uh, Warsaw team that won uh, state and I saw them do kind of the same thing to Southeastern uh, one of the most, but those were one of the most amazing teams I'd seen, you know, overall. And of course, we're a state champion as well. But um, saw Nauvoo do it to QND uh, once as well. So, I mean, but 60 points, you figure uh, they're still averaging mm, somewhere pretty close there, a little below four points a minute, but they're three and some, three and some odd change. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try it again. I'm not. Okay, it's bothering me. So it's three and three quarters points. Something like that. <laughs> Sorry, things like that drive me nuts. So three and three quarters or 12 sixteenths, which simplifies to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for going into a math lesson here <laughs> on a basketball game. But. I'm sure it's exactly what everyone wanted to hear. To get their personalized math lesson from the one and only Greg Phelps. Well, you do a lot of other things. You could. Maybe start math tutoring too. Well, there we go. I could put, have a little chalkboard behind me, and at the half we can do a little, little <laughs> you can math. Start solving lessons. equations and. Well, math was never my favorite thing in school. Sports math was something I I enjoyed a lot, and that's what, you know, that is. Percentages, and I love trends. I used to run NCA tournament pools. We can say we can talk about gambling on this because we're on the internet. So, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no, it it was one of those things that. Yeah, so they're averaging three and three quarters points a minute, and that's you know that's amazing that you can do something like that. Is you know running up and down like they are. It is. It has been phenomenal. And and you know the typical possession we saw uh, Peterson rear back and throw one and on kind of on one bounce, boom, does in and scores. Yeah, I mean it's just been impressive. All these girls know how to pass. They are. Just, they are just waiting to get that steal, get that missed shot, and their eyes are um, towards the other end of the court looking for somebody down there. And I said, I mean, it's just – it seems like they teleport down there almost after every shot and steal, and they are just there waiting for the layup. And as we've seen, 60 points, it's hard to do. Well, and, and there are some ways to combat that. Uh, for the Cyclones, one of the things they've got to do is be far more patient on offense – They've had a few possessions, uh, and it's more than one of them, where they've driven down, kind of thrown up a crazy shot. It's one of those things for the Cyclones where you really need to come down. To, to combat a team like this, you come down, you run a possession for 20, 30 seconds because it's one of those weird things where offense becomes your best defense. Yeah, absolutely. you got to find a way to slow them down, slowing it up on offense, not putting up shots early in the shot clock, working the ball around, trying to get good looks. It's all things that West Perry can try to do to slow them down. And, I mean, 
the biggest thing would just be take care of the basketball, not turn it over. But as we've seen here, that's proven uh, very difficult as Brimfield has done an excellent job playing the passing lanes, poking the ball free and getting on top of it and getting down the court and scoring. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm going to wet my whistle for those playing the home game. Consume. As we uh, go along here on the broadcast, and we'll see how these Cyclones uh, come out here. This one of those things, uh, you know, Bugs Bunny said at one time, my mother told me there'd be days like this, because <laughs> that, that's the way the game of basketball goes. And and it's one of those things, you, you tip your hat to a great opponent. You just you, you tip your cap and you go, eh, okay, you're pretty darn good. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, as I was going to say, Brentfield has put together a great program, a lot of wins here in the past couple of years, and it looks like they're going to be on pace for another great season. I'm telling you, it's going to take a pretty doggone good team to, to beat them. And, and they're fairly deep, too. They're running eight or nine, uh, you know, players out there. It's going to be – and really, I believe Loon's the one that they, they always talk about, and she eh, sort of got going, sort of hasn't. But you've got two girls running about anywhere from – hard to tell from up here, I'd say 5'10 to 6 foot, and maybe three or four of them. Yeah, the, the height on this team is insane, and their ability to get out in transition is even crazier. Well, and it goes back to a, a philosophy, and you can see the Brimfield using that a little bit. Um, I liken to the Golden State Warriors in the NBA is basketball has become a positionless game. Mm -hmm. And you can see Brimfield, you know, modeling that here. And for a 118, that's a little bit rare. You see more than the 2A the upper and the 3A, 4A variety, but really good when you can do that and you can put pressure on opposing teams, post players, because you're getting out in transition. And one thing we saw early from Brimfield, they kind of abandoned it here, is that press that they put on for a little bit was extremely effective. And then when you have girls that are this athletic, that tall, that long, it's that's going to be a tough press to break. So I, I can see this team going very far, and when they get in close games, they can slap that bad boy right on and just – go from there although i will kind of laugh i'm sorry brimfield fans because i may have just given you the kiss of death because i said that about hartsburg emden give credit southeastern beat them absolutely not to state tournament volleyball but uh, you know there you go that's how much my knowledge produces <laughs> and on the floor for the cyclones to start second half i do know maddie hood with some foul trouble um maddie hood a uh, little foul trouble she's got three Grace Fanonic, Lauren Powell, Addie Despain, and Allie Arnold. As Despain will bring it in into Vanonic. Loon nearly got her hand on that. As Doe out there, Doe, Peterson, uh, Fabry, also Bedell, and Loon. Powell dribbling in, and she's going to carry it. Went in there. Inbounds comes, bringing it on the way is Peterson. Peterson. Gives it over for Loon. Loon holding out top there, looking for something in the lane. Comes out top for Fabry. Over for Peterson, looking at Loon. Had her for a second, pulled it down. Now comes over, and they work it down the corner. Bedell out top for Peterson. Three on the way. No good. Rebound chased to the corner, and Vanonic snaps it up, and we're on the way. 7.20, clock rolling here, third quarter. The Cyclones bring it up. Vanonic over to the Spain. And... Loon says, get that stuff out of here. That's the polite way to say it from the playground version or pickup ball version. Into Spain. Lobs it high for Vanonic. Vanonic dribbling, 17 footer on the way. Good. So the Cyclones cut it to 60 to 17. As Peterson comes across half court here, gives to Loon. Loon holding out top. Fakes. Dribbles on Grace Vanonic down the lane. Reverse, uh-huh. Wow, great move there from uh, Loon, able to get it inside, throws up the nice reverse shot and gets two points. Vanonic works it out top here, brings it over to Arnold. Arnold will uh, dribble it in and have her pocket pick. There goes Peterson up the court again, lays it up and lays it in. Matty Hood really couldn't give much uh, pressure on it with the three fouls, and so it becomes uh, 64 to 17. Powell out top with it. And she gets one right back. Drops one home, make it a 64-19 advantage for Brimfield. Back comes Peterson. Peterson over to 
Doe. Doe will swing it out of there, down uh, for Bedell. Bedell in the corner, Peterson a couple fakes, drives lane, puts up the floater and will be fouled from behind. And I'll tell you what, this becomes a weapon too because they're doing these line shifts constantly. And you get some of their younger players some really good experience, they're going to be even more dangerous. As Grace Vanonic, or not Vanonic, Peterson able to drop that one in. Kappas will come in. Loon and Doe will go out. Get the others that came in. I believe that is Hessing. And Peterson uh, drops him in. For a 66 to 19 advantage. Powell with it, going to dribble down, bounces, tried to bounce it to Spain. She had the opening, and then dribbles in. Hessing says, no, uh-uh, and pass uh, taken away. It is Peterson dribbling from her knees up to Kappas. Kappas lays it off the glass, no good. Right there is Bedell, scoops it up, and she gets it to go. And West Prairie just not able to close out possessions. Even when Brimfield does miss, they just get the offensive rebound, put it back up, and so we see uh, Addison Spain driving and getting the foul there. I believe they're going to call that one on the floor. That is Hessing. Inbounds comes from Despain. Despain uh, bounces in. Arnold has it swatted away by Fabry. And back they'll come the other way. On the way with it is Peterson and Good. So 70 to 21, or 70 to 19. Sorry, this program gets a little sticky sometimes. So 70 to 19, and Lauren Powell has her pocket pick. Fabry lobbing up to Peterson. Peterson in the lane, fakes, goes up, missed it. Kappas with it. She'll put it up and miss it. And the Cyclones fighting against each other tapped it out of bounds. Inbounds coming in. Peterson threw it away. <laughs> And out of there with it comes Addie to Spain over to uh, Vanonic. Vanonic will walk it up here with five minutes left to go, third quarter. Off to De Spain. De Spain dribbling out top, working against Hessing. Stands, looks to dribble down the lane, goes up and gets it to go. Nice job, Addie to Spain, kind of taking what the defense gave her. Makes it 70 to 21, 450. Clock rolling as Peterson comes back the other way. Working against a 1-2-2 zone by the Cyclones. Kappas out as she watches Fabry cut through. Come down to Peterson. Peterson watching Fabry cut through. Cross courts it to Hessing. Hessing throwing in the middle. Stolen by Arnold. Off to Powell. Powell, one on three. Gets in there. Misses it. One for Mr. Castleberry. And out comes Fabry. Fabry lays it up and lays it in the other way. 72-21. Down to four minutes left here. Powell. Uh, we've got a timeout call by West Prairie. 72 to 21 the lead here. We need to thank more of the fine folks making our broadcast uh, possible along the way here. And they would include uh, McDonough Telephone Cooperative. This game, West Prairie game stream is made possible by McDonough Telephone's fiber internet. McDonough Telephone offers lightning fast and reliable fiber internet video, phone and camera systems in the McDonough County area. Call 309-776-3211 to check your availability. For all your local news, subscribe to the Community News Brief Weekly Edition mailed directly to your home every Friday as an option. You can also receive Monday and Wednesday editions by email. All of this for only $42 per year or $38 per year if you're age 65 or older. Single copies can be purchased at select locations in Bushnell, Colchester, and Blandsville. Hey, and I want to tell you something. A little extra, the sophomore class, class of 2024, selling uh, raffle tickets. <laughs> for a uh, whole hog or a half hog uh, raffle. So see your favorite sophomore class of 2024 or uh, contact the school. I'm sure they'd love to get you some tickets. That would be a great thing for you to take home at Thanksgiving is half a hog. You do have to pay processing for it. But uh, I know uh, the appointments already made for you. So all you have to do is uh, win it. The hog will be delivered there and away you'll go. So how about that? That would be an excellent Christmas present as well, nothing better than a fresh butchered beef or hog. And I sound like some kind of uh, meat product commercial, but, you know, it is what it is. 
the things we do on this broadcast, John, uh, we never thought we would. Grace Fanonic dribble in and has it picked away. And now Fabry up with it to Peterson. Peterson stops, waits, and goes out cross courts it to Kappas. Kappas down to Bedell. Bedell up and under, missed it, tipped it. And Eddie Despain pulling out of there with it. 350, clock roll in third quarter as Despain comes up the court to Powell. Powell dribble in and going to draw a foul on Peterson. As it'll be the second on the Indians here in this second half. We have not had quite the uh, grabby gotchas in the second game as we did the second half as we did in the first. Powell, the free throw is good. And so that cuts the lead to 72 to 22. Powell, second one on the way, he is good as well. 72-23. Back come the Indians. Peterson up top with it. Wings it over to Fabry. Fabry in the lane for Bedell. Bedell tried to pass it at it, tipped away. Peterson recovers. And nearly lost herself. Comes in the corner to Hessing. To Peterson over to Kappas. Kappas in the lane to Bedell. Bedell bouncing down to Hessing. And that one tapped out of bounds. It'll stay with Brimfield. So showing a little bit more fight here on uh, defense as Peterson toes it in. Out to Kappas, Kappas three on the way, no good, and the rebound tipped, and Fabry comes up with it, foul from behind by Grace Fanonic. Second on the team in their second half, and once again, here comes the line shift. As Fabry spots it at the free throw line. First one on the way, it is good. Jersey Brown will check in as well. And everybody but Fabry will go out. So that means Loon will check in along with Wewell, Vaughn, and Doe. Grace Fanonic will go out. Second one by Fabry is good. And she will step out. 74-23. Spain brings it in to Lauren Powell. Powell looking up here to Despain. Despain dribbling down here, backs it out as Heinz watching her on the baseline. Dribbles and lost the ball out of bounds. Turns it over to Brimfield. And now with it comes as the Cyclone's going to pressure a little bit over to Vaughn. Over to Doe. Doe down for Loon. Loon. Fakes a couple times, dribbles in, right around Hood, puts it up and in. 76-23. As Powell brings it up. Just come down to the wing, holds it out, kind of looking for Despain. Despain nearly had a pick, dribbles it out now. Want to go baseline, Heinz doing a good job watching her, comes to Hood. Hood spins and right into the waiting hands of Loon, who lobs it out of there as... Coming the court, Hood trying to steal it to Doe. And Doe will watch a couple Cyclones fly by. Comes to Loon, Loon holds it out top. Spins the baseline, puts up 16 footer, won't go. Rebound Bell down with it. Nice job of her blocking out. And back they'll come the other way. Addy to Spain out top with it with a freshman Heinz on her. Two minutes left to go in this third quarter and Powell dribbles it off her foot to Despain. She'll go up, kind of toss it up there. Doe pulls it down. And back will come Brimfield. Up to Loon. Loon in the lane for Heinz. He nearly dropped it. Had it taken away now. Powell gets it out of there to Spain. To Spain one-on-one -on -one with Vaughn. Dribbles in. Shoots it. Won't go. Rebound Heinz. Push into Loon. Loon slows it up. Now you can hear Coach uh, Dura. Now that <laughs> pulls it up and Loon drops home a three. 79-23. Powell over the timeline, dribbling on Vaughn. Vaughn picks it away from her and dribbles up the court. Nearly lost it, puts it up, puts it in, and good. And we've got a timeout whistled here by West Prairie. Lindsey Dunn will check in at the uh, dead ball. 81-23 to 23 lead for the Indians of Brimfield. As 
We'll see. I know uh, Lineye West, one of the opponents they'll see down at uh, the Brown County Tournament down there in Mount Sterling. Might be a good time to head over to Dorothy's Market. Not that they're a sponsor, but <laughs> one of my favorite plugs. Oh, they have bags of chips for a buck twenty-five. That's one of the other things, you know, hey. Greg. <laughs> That's not too bad of a deal, huh? <laughs> no, not not at all. And it's a big bag. Too. Oh, the fun things that we come up with here. Like I said, uh, I, I hope you enjoy, folks, and I hope you enjoy as we uh, uh, go along here on. Uh, um, as we go along here on the broadcasts, uh, you know, uh, uh, part of it is uh, you have fun. Part of it is we're glad to bring this at home to you. You can see a lot of it, but always happy to hopefully make it a, a fun uh, to join in with us, even games like this. Um, I have been through many of them, so <laughs> I know how that goes. Oh, that works. Powell bringing in bounds here with a minute 20 left to go here in this third quarter as she brings it over the timeline. Looks to work it down on Vaughn. Going toward the lane, nearly lost it. Puts up shot, no good, and the rebound batted out. Loon bats it to herself and heads up the court as Arnold finally cuts her off. Works it out for Hines. Hines in the lane, puts it up and puts it in. 83 now to 23. That's Powell over the timeline. Dribbles it. Out top here is Vaughn watching her. Arnold Jerbound, Vaughn coming after it over to Brown. Brown in the lane for Arnold. Arnold out for Powell. Puts up three, gets it. See the three, be the three. Drops it home for 83 26 fan. Right back though comes Vaughn and Brimfield as Powell nearly took it away. Squares it up. Bringing out top to Doe over to Loon. Loon toes up another three. It is no good. And the rebound tapped out of bounds. It'll stay with Brimfield. 17 seconds left to go here, third quarter. Inbounds will come from Vaughn underneath the basket. Over to Loon. Loon in the lane to Heinz. Heinz goes to put on the way, and you heard the slap <laughs> up here. Allie Arnold with the whack. That's her fourth. I would guess they heard that presumably all the way up to Scioto, which is about three quarters of a mile that way. I guess you at home can't see that <laughs> way. Heinz misses the first. Second one on the way, it is good. So 84 to uh, 26. And they bring it out to Dunn. Dunn working out top on Heinz. Over to Brown. Brown. Coming in the lane. Puts it up. Can't get it to go. And that's the end of the uh, third quarter of play uh, with our score. 84 to 26 in favor of Brimfield. Uh, let's take this uh, timeout on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. I became a nurse practitioner because I wanted to do more. I wanted to learn more, um, actually have more um, hands-on individually with patients. The rewarding part for me is that I get to come to work and learn something new every single day. And we're back here as we head toward the uh, fourth quarter. I assume it will be relatively quick as uh, I figure they are going to go to a running clock for this uh, fourth quarter of play. As we'll wait here. So 84 to 26. As on the floor for the Cyclones, it'll be Lauren Powell, Addie Despain, Grace Vanonic, Allie Arnold, and Maddie Hood. Despain will bring it in over for Powell. Powell will dribble it down here. And we'll get the Brimfield lineup in a moment. Despain out top with it. 
Gives it down to Powell. Powell guarded by Peterson. Bounces in for Vanonic. She'll try to spin, put it up on campus, and get it to go. Nice job there by Grace Vanonic. Cutting the lead to 84 to 29. As they tried to lob it up to Fabry, couldn't get it to her. And makes it. And I corrected myself, and I was actually right. So that's good. I like that that way. As <laughs> on the uh, score there, Vanonic with it, dribbling uh, down the lane, kicks it out to the Spain. She'll tow the three, and that one will hit at the underside of the rim. Fabry out of there with it, over to Peterson. Peterson works it. As we go with seven minutes left to go in the game, we'll wings it in the lane for Hessing, who dropped it. And Maddie Hood comes out of there with it. Hood to Vanonic. Over to Powell. And Kappas nearly uh, going to be calling for the foul. Nearly picked it away from Lauren Powell. As Jersey Brown will come in, Lauren Powell will go out for West Prairie. 84 to 28 lead here. 6.30 and counting. As ball brought in to Vanonic. She'll fake the three. Dribble. Go up. Shot won't stick. And it is Despain down with the rebound. She spins. And loses the handle on the ball, and then two Cyclones hit heads. And that one, I think Eddie just. Disp- Eddie Arnold wanting to stay on the floor here. Eddie Arnold wanting to stay on the floor as. And both of them have to come off as they call. A stoppage of play there, and Addie Despain, I think, got a cut Looks like above right, her eye. Yeah, right above the left eye there. As they're checking, and what the officials are checking for is uh, blood possibly on the floor. As it's one of those things uh, they would have to come out and mop up here. And they're trying to get uh, Addie Despain. I would get, you know, heads come together, and you cut up on the uh, eyebrow. It's one of those things that makes it uh, pretty tough, and they're trying to. And anytime you have kind of a head injury like that, it is always extremely difficult because you just don't know um, how that's going to go. And of course, putting gloves on and that, and was working on Eddie's pain. And I know um, I have had those cuts up about that area of the eyebrow, and I've also. Uh, I guess I said given those as well. <laughs> and they are something else. As Maddie Hood will come in, uh, bring it in to Bell Petty. Petty dribbling down, dumps it off to Jersey Brown. Brown has her pocket pick as Kappas comes out of there. And you got to give Coach Duro a little credit. She's pulling up the throttle here with an 84-28 lead. They bring in the lane to Hessing over to Bedell. Bedell trying to dribble, wings it out. Peterson puts it well on the three and puts it home. So it'll be 87 to 28. The lead now. Out to Petty. Petty dribbling down. Puts up shot. No good off the side of the backboard. Hessing rips it down to Peterson. And now they'll walk it up. 540 left to go here in this ballgame. And we've got a timeout, a sub timeout. As Loon, We Will, Doe, Vaughn, and Heinz will come in. As Trying to get that uh, cut to stop. And actually, I don't think Grant Bland realized that it was actually just a substitution timeout. Actually, the Brimfield on the floor here. So Hood will check back in as... The Cyclones. Well, now the uh, Brimfield folks come over to the bench here. Again, five and a half left to go in the ballgame. 87 to 28, the lead here for the Brimfield Indians. As bringing the ball inbounds will be Vaughn. Vaughn over to Doe. And Vaughn down the corner, Loon, a couple of dribbles, loops it in, and Heinz right there, Try, couldn't get it, and putting it up. On the rebound is Loon. If that fouls on Hood, that's her fourth. 
And it'll be Loon up at the free throw line. She'll shoot two here. Free throw is good. I think it's at 88 to 28. Second one on the way. It is no good. Hood the rebound. And Maddie Hood will lead the charge up the floor. And needs help, but she picked up her dribble. That one, Bell able to scoop it up. Puts up shot. It is no good. And the rebound tipped around. Loon's out of there with it. And Maddie Hood back. They gump it right off to Heinz, who puts it up and puts it in. 90 to 28 lead. Four and a half clock counting here in this one. Has come out. Petty going to put up a three. That one off side of the backboard. Heinz down with it out to Loon. Loon dribbling it up here. Slows up and then goes right through the defense. Missed it. Heinz bats it back to her, but she did not reestablish after she came inbound. You got to have both feet back in to reestablish. As Doe will go out, Kappas will come in. Also, Hessing coming in and Loon going out for Grimfield. And we're going to have a mass timeout. I'm not sure why, but we are. So we'll step aside as well. This is TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDA. I have my certificate in vestibular rehabilitation, which focuses on patients with dizziness and balance disorders. It's been very rewarding because a lot of times it's a very short-lived um, treatment plan and the patient has remarkable results in a small amount of time. And we are back here as we uh, go along. And, of course, we'll have more games for you uh, coming. And don't forget, that is a big thing. Uh, Dwayne and the guys coming up with, uh, I believe you're going to, are you going to be there, yes, John? Yes, I will be. Tomorrow night they're going to do a four-camera look at the uh, eight-man championships. I might have to get some chips and nachos and watch along with yeah. everybody at home. Uh, eight-man championships going to be on uh, tomorrow night. Ought to be a fun time there. And then, of course, uh, I believe that, what time, 7 o'clock? Yeah, it starts at 7 o'clock, and as Dwayne mentioned, there'll be a one-hour uh, pregame show, actually. So we're really pulling out all the stops for this one. I was going to say the it, uh, Fox Sports pregame show. Yeah, exactly. We want to make it as enjoyable as we can for all the people that are going to be tuning in, and it definitely should be a good time, and I'm really looking forward to it. And so they will bring it in. The it, Coming in is Hood with it to Brown. As Jersey Brown bring it up, a 350 left to go here in the ball game. It will work it on the way. It handed off to Dunn. Dunn down the lane. Kicks over to Petty. Petty shoots three. No good. And the rebound, Kappas. She'll lead up. Got a three on one. Comes in the lane. Throws it over to Hessing. Hessing trying to dump to Hines and can't. Hines recovered it. Kappas out. Over to Vaughn. And Vaughn will just back it out there. And again, I got to applaud Coach Dura for doing that. They're working a little offense here, and on the, but we will puts it on the way, won't get it to go. Heinz the rebound, puts it up, missed it, puts it up again, and good. The freshman putting it up and in, and good. And it is 92 to 28. Dunn and Brown working it out top. Dunn trying to work it in the lane, puts up shot, won't go. And the rebound, Petty with it, puts it up, no good. Rebound, Bell. Can't get it to go, and it's pulled down by Kappas. Kappas over there, drives down the lane, whips it over for Hessing. Hessing throws it up. Heinz says, thanks for the gumball, Mickey. 94 now to 28. 240 and counting in this ball game. Brown dribbling down, gives it to Petty. Petty turning as Hessing cuts her off. Throws it past Dunn. Kappas with the steal. Running ahead of Matty Hood. And Hood will be whistled for the foul. And I believe that will be number five on Hood. She already started the walk to the bench. And so, let's see who said. Janie Phelps will sub in for Hood. As Kappas will be at the free throw line. Puts it up. 
Missed it. Crazy next one. Free throw on the way. It is good. She also has that kind of one hand push shot free throw. I haven't seen that very often. 95 28. Minute 40 left to go here in this one as Brown brings it up to try to bring it to Dunn. Kappa steals it away again. Dribbles it in the lane. Floater's good. 97 28. Brown. Comes across half court, hands it off to Dunn. Dunn trying to kind of just push her way into the basket. Shoots that one, no good. And rebound, we will. Off to Vaughn, and they will walk it up here with a minute 10 left to go here in the ball game. Kappas holds in the lane to Hines. Hines right down the lane, puts it up and puts it in. 99 almost to the century mark here. As the Indians... I put it across there, 50 seconds left to go in the game. Brown has it out to Petty. Petty, hands off to Dunn. Handing off to Brown here. Going to work a little uh, clock here in this one. As Brown coming down to the baseline, spins it out of there. Went to hand it half, hands it to Petty. Petty down the near side. And Kappas. Taps that out of bounds. It'll stay with West Prairie with 20 seconds left to go in the game. Bell will bring it in. And that one stolen away but knocked out as Hessing. Now with 10 seconds left. Bell will bring it in again. And a five second call and that will be the ball game. 99 to 28. Our final score here as the Cyclones of West Prairie uh, take a beating by the uh, Brimfield Lady Indians here uh, tonight. Got to take your hat off to those Indians. And uh, once again, we want to thank our very fine sponsors, uh, sponsors that include people like uh, JoJo's Gaming Parlor, JoJo's Gaming Parlor. Of course, offering a lot of great uh, amenities along the way in our pre- and post-game sponsor. JoJo's Gaming Parlor offers the best gaming experience in the McDonough County area. Stop in for a cold drink and a chance to take home a nice wad of cash while you're at it. Also on game nights, check out the TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH Events live on the big screens. Come join your friends at JoJo's. Look at 776 North Cole Street, Bushnell, and cheer our area teams on to victory. John, some final thoughts from you, young man. I mean, there's not a lot to talk about. We saw it in the uh, junior varsity game, and it uh, translated to the varsity game, as we talked about it all night. It's just that transition game of Brimfield. And, I mean, as you mentioned, this is going to be a tough team to beat for any team, putting up almost 100 points, and a high school basketball game is impressive in its own right. And, I mean, this is definitely a team we could see playing in postseason based off this first game. I mean, I know it's the first game of the year, but they looked really good tonight. Yeah, it looked awesome. I mean, that that's that's a hugely impressive thing uh, to be able to put up points like they did uh, tonight. So a fantastic, fantastic uh, night for them. And we'll see uh, how they do as they will uh, head along the postseason here. And I know we'll get one return trip over there uh, coming up this season. So that is going to wrap it up from uh, here tonight as the Cyclones fall at the hands of the uh, Brimfield Indians and you have been listening and watching TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH thanks for tuning us in thanks for turning us on